Well, we made it to another Monday, everybody. Hope you had a great weekend, and welcome back to the program. Brandon Crow with you, as always, every Monday throughout the basketball season here on ESPN 960. This is the UVU Coaches Show, unofficially sponsored today by Crocs. And uh, I'll explain what that means in, in just a little bit later on down the road in the show. And uh, speaking of which, we've got a great one for you today. UVU escaped Westminster last Wednesday to improve to 2-1 and one on the season. We'll hear from some of the postgame comments from Dawes Amok and from Coach Mark Madsen. We'll have a sit-down with Coach Madsen as well. And then looking ahead to this week for Utah Valley, we've got Southern Utah coming into town on Wednesday night. And then Wyoming will ride in on Saturday. And both teams are doing very well right now. We'll dive into the specifics a little bit more later. But uh, we'll also hear from Thunderbird head coach Todd Simon. And Kyle McDonald will help us break down what's going on in the Western Athletic Conference. So Utah Valley again this past week had their hands full on Wednesday night, just to say the least. Uh, Westminster, give them credit. Yes, I know you're probably rolling your eyes if you didn't watch or didn't see the game, but you're thinking to yourself, really? Westminster, a Division II team? Yes, yes, that is. And that's why they play the game. That's why they strap up the shoes, and that's why they go out there and play the game. Because anything can happen on any given night, and just because a team is from a different division doesn't mean necessarily that they cannot play basketball. So Utah Valley came away with the victory 79-71, but it was very hard fought. And uh, there were times where Westminster looked every bit the more confident than Utah Valley did. But doing what good teams do, Utah Valley found a way to come back and be victorious. They were able to grind out a, a victory. So Utah Valley again defeated the Griffins of Westminster 79-71 and uh, Utah Valley took the lead at the break 42 to 25 but saw a second half surge from the Griffins that I don't think anybody was really ready for. Jamison Overton and Latrade Darthur each scored 16 points for Utah Valley. Dawes Amax added 12 points and 18 rebounds, another double-double for him. And Trey Woodbury pitched in with 11 points, 4 rebounds, 5 assists. Again, the final score, 79-71, and give the Griffins credit. They came in, they disrupted Utah Valley, and uh, were able to to cause some frustrations on the Utah Valley bench. But Utah Valley was able to pull away, and they were able to learn some things. They were able to get some playing time for some players out there. We were able to see Colby Lafson, and uh, it was good to see him out there. He had exposure to COVID. He did not have COVID. He had exposure to COVID. And uh, had to have his quarantine time. So he was able to see his first minutes of action this year. And he did great. And uh, we'll hear from Coach Mark Madsen about that just a little bit later. But uh, he, along with with the rest of the crew, did a fantastic job in pulling through, gritting their teeth, and getting a victory when when they needed to. Now, again, this is a team that still does not have Evan Cole, no Tim Fuller, and Jordan Brinson didn't play last week as well. But... Needless to say, the Wolverines shot 56% from the floor in the first half, and then just 32% in the second half. Yes, it was ugly at times, but UVU was still able to grind out a victory, which, like I said, is what good teams do. Just a reminder, still not a full team. But this team is going to do, is going to continue to get better. They're growing together, and they're still finding ways to learn together. And this is, uh, this is what Fardaz Amak had to say after Wednesday's victory. Um, I think we started off the uh, first half how we should play um, the way that we're supposed to play. And we came out in the second half and we had some lapses that, you know, led to turnovers, uh, miscommunication on defense, which we um, were making a, you know emphasis. The staff was trying to, you know, let us know that this, these are the types of games that we got to, you know, put the fire out early and uh, do what we're supposed to do. Uh, and, and we didn't quite do that the second half, but like Coach was saying um, in the post game, uh, talk that this is this is a game where we learn, and and all it is is just feedback and um, information for us to get better and just, just keep growing as, as a team. 
how valuable is it to have an early game where you needed to make some plays down the stretch? They had some momentum. They, you know, they made that run to get it close there, you know, kind of late in the game. How, how important is it to have that experience early on in the season and, and kind of learn and grow from it, like you said? I, th- I think that's what you just said right there. Is that's the most important thing that um, we can do as a team because right now our end goal is um, the conference tournament and, and winning that. So everything we do from here um, is just to build up for that. Uh, we're just trying to prepare for that as a team. So all these mistakes and lapses and the good and the bad is, is just our building blocks towards – the, uh, the end of the season, and, and the earlier we learn, the better it is for our team. I also wanted to talk about, uh, you know, the, the acclimation process. So many guys didn't get minutes last year. I know you're around the team, so you know these yeah. guys, but it's a little different being on the floor. Yeah. Now that you're starting to get a couple of games in, how's that, how's that you know, evolution coming as far as this team goes in your view? Yeah, well, like we all say, we got a we got a super deep team. Um, anyone can outplay anybody from one through five um, starters or non-starters. Um, we got some guys who are out, we're coming back, and there are rotation guys that are going to be a big impact for us and help us do what we're trying to do. So I mean, it's keeps you on your toes. You can't ever take plays off. You can't you can't really mess around because if you mess around, you know. Uh, you got somebody just as good coming in to take you off. And if you're not ready, then that's just how it's going to be. What do you feel like the the step this team needs to take next? I mean, you get the win tonight, which was nice, 2-1 yeah. on the season. That's nice. But uh, what's the next step? I think the next step is just growing as a team overall. I think we're, we're young. Um, and we have guys that have experience, but the, the role that some guys have to play now, um, I think just – the, the mold that they're fitting into now is um, important for us to, to know what we're supposed to do for us to be the best possible team come uh, in March. Um, I think if we do what we're continuing to do and practice every single day and, and win the games that we're supposed to win and, and continue to, you know, outwork every team that we play, I think – we're going to be in a great position um, come November or uh, March, March time when we got to play in the conference tournament and, and um, so, so on after that. So you heard it straight there from Farnaz Amak. They need to get better, and they will, and uh, especially on the defensive side. With the, growing, with the growing pains come some communication gaps as well. And again, we're not having a full squad still. Everybody is still trying to figure each other out, and this is what Coach Mark Madsen had to say after the game against Westminster on Wednesday night. Yeah, th- thoughts on the game. What I told the guys was this. Uh, first of all, give Westminster a lot of credit. Westminster battled and battled and battled and made it a very close game. Um, I told our guys it was a story of, of two halves. The, the first half would go to the locker room with, I think, a 17- or 19-point lead. And where we need to grow as a team is when we have those types of leads, we have to extend them. We have, we have to extend them. In the second half, we, we had miscommunications collectively. We, we did not shoot the ball well from the free throw line. And, and then on the defensive end, not enough resistance. We, we did not have enough resistance against, against their best players. And so their best players were able to get to the rim and slip free for at least two or three different layups. And so when it's all said and done, that's on me. We have to get better. Um, I, was, I was very impressed with how scrappy Westminster was. And as far as the UVU team, our team, we have to get better. We have to improve. We, we have to be able to take those situations where the game gets close and, and make the plays uh, to put that separation in. Well, I, kind of leading that kind of led into what I wanted to talk about, Mark, because the first two games, you know, you win handily the game one, game two kind of got away from you a little bit. But this game, you know, down the stretch, you needed guys to make plays and they were able to do what they needed to do to put the game away. How valuable is that at this point in the season? I, th- I think it is valuable, Jared. I was, you look at what Latre Darthar did. Latre- had a great floater in the lane. He nailed a three. He knocked down free throws. Um, defensively, he made good plays. I thought Trey Woodbury made some – he had a key assist late. Trey's a great basketball. He got into some foul trouble early. 
But Trey made a heady play to drop the ball for a layup uh, to, to one of our players. And so, um, obviously, again, you, you have to acknowledge Coach Norm over at Westminster, the heart that the Westminster players played with. But, but I was proud of our guys for when the game did get close, you know, because we weren't making our free throws. Our guys were able to step up and make plays. That's good. That's growth. But now we have to grow even more, uh, and we have to learn from this. How, how, how did you feel like they did over – you mentioned a couple of guys that made some really good decisions down the stretch. There was that stretch, though, where the decision-making – you know, in the first half, you had a stretch where it looked, you know, it was great. You had that big run. And then the second half, maybe some of the, the decision-making was questionable. How do you feel like the team's doing overall in that area, both ends, offensively, offensively and defensively? One of the biggest areas of growth that, that, that I can see right now, and I'll, I'll go home and study the tape, is defensive communication. First half, we were good. We were good. We were talking. We were talking and pointing. Um, communication was happening. In the second half, it did not happen at the same level. And so we'll continue to work on that because those lapses, some of the lapses, uh, most of those lapses are preventable with great communication. Um, and so we have to improve our communication. I, I would say that executing in, in tight quarters, Westminster got into us uh, on the press. We weren't able to execute our press breaker. Um, again, give Westminster credit, but but that's an execution thing that can be corrected and, and it will be corrected and it's on me to correct it. But, um, you know, when, when it's all said and done to have this experience now, we're going to take it as a positive because we're, we're going to pull the clips. We're going to do team film training tomorrow and we'll do individual film study and we'll, we'll grow from this. We'll, we'll improve from this and it'll, it'll help make us better in the next games and in conference. So again, you heard it there from both Coach Mark Madsen and Fardaz Amak. They both talked about stepping up the communication on both sides of the ball, offensive and defensive, and uh, especially defensive play. And definitely they will need that coming into this week with Southern Utah and Wyoming. I mentioned earlier at the beginning of the show, they both are fantastic programs and really clicking right now. Southern Utah sits atop of the big sky and are coming off of two thrilling one-point games against Montana over the weekend. So the Big Sky is is adopting the same style of play as far as conference goes that Utah Valley and the Western Athletic Conference will have come January, where each team will play each other two times back-to-back in the same location. One, one game, one team will be away. The other game, the other will be home team. So uh, in this case, Southern Utah was the host, and Montana came down on Thursday and Southern Utah got the first victory over Montana at home in Cedar City since 1999. Final score there was 64 to 63 in favor of Southern Utah. And then just two nights two nights after that, just a couple nights ago on Saturday night, Southern Utah again in a thrilling fashion, 75-74 takes down the Grizzlies. So, again, Southern Utah coming off of two thrilling one-point victories over a good, solid Montana squad sitting atop of the big sky is who Utah Valley plays in Orem on Wednesday. Fast forward a couple days after that, and then the Cowboys of Wyoming. They're not last one up wooden wooden horses right now either. They're 3-1, and and they're coming off of a big 76-73 win over Pac-12 foe Oregon State last night. The Cowboys will take on Denver on Wednesday night before coming here to Orem on Saturday. So we'll keep you posted with, with how that goes during the pregame show and during the uh, the broadcast on Wednesday. But again, two solid squads coming into Orem. And it'll be a great chance, great test for Utah Valley. Uh, we're not sure yet if Evan Cole or if Tim Fuller will be ready for those games. Hopefully we can see some of them uh, in either of those games, but uh, I think Jordan Brinson will be back for Wednesday's game against Southern Utah. But like I said, we're just getting started here on the UV Coaches Show. And coming up next, what does Tai Chi of Phoenix and Mark Manson have in common? You'll find out. This is the UV Coaches Show on ESPN 960. 25 years. Amazing moments. Amazing crowds. Game winners. The Wolverines come from behind. Support Utah Valley Athletics. Donate $25 to celebrate 25 years at the UCCU Center. 
half a million visitors witnessed athletic achievement at the UCCU Center. Support UVU Athletics today. Hi, I'm Blake. And I'm Ben. Start your holidays at the Murdoch Season of Giving event. With every new vehicle purchase, customers receive a $250 holiday VIP gift card to Utah's locally owned Owl Sporting Goods. In the spirit of giving, a portion of each sale is being donated to Utah Foster Care during the holidays. As the saying goes, it's always better to give than receive. This month, Murdoch Hyundai is giving our customers 0% for 72 months on the Tucson, Santa Fe, and Sonata, plus $1,000 bonus cash or no payments until April 2021. You've got to come and see us online at MurdochHyundai.com. Hello again, everybody, and welcome back to the UVU Coaches Show presented by the UVU Alumni Association. Brandon Crow with you here, as always, every Monday throughout the basketball season on ESPN 960. And we are pleased to be joined by head coach Mark Madsen. Coach, first off, we'll dive into the Utah Valley uh, basketball um, X's and O's, I guess, in just a second. But some big news from the Lakers. Just want to get your take on it. What do you think about them re-signing LeBron and AD? Well, first and foremost, Brandon, thanks for having me on the show. Um, and you brought up the Lakers. I'm happy about it. I'm really happy about it. Obviously, the Lakers in, in the COVID season, it was a tough year for everyone. I, I was happy the NBA was able to get back on track and play down in the bubble in Orlando. And for as an organization, as a franchise, for the Lakers to have been able to re-sign two Hall of Famers is incredible. I, I think Rob Polinka really d did a nice job of of not only bringing those players in to begin with, of re-signing them, and uh, of having a supporting cast with tremendous shooting, which complements AD's game and it complements LeBron's game. Uh, we have some social media questions we'll get into throughout the conversation. Uh, this one comes in from Kyle Jellings in California, and he wants to know, what was your welcome to the NBA moment? Welcome to the NBA moment. Um, what was probably was probably in the weight room uh, on the very first day of training camp. I was nervous. I had met a few of the guys on the team. I had met Kobe about a month and a half earlier in, in August. And so I was in there just nervous, just trying to blow off some steam by lifting weights. And Shaq came right in there, and, and he introduced himself. He asked me if I was the rookie. I said yes. And, uh, you know, he, he just started talking to me about basketball. And, and in that moment, I said to myself, am I really here right now? Shaquille just walked over, <laughs> just, you know, started hitting me up, started chatting me up, and, and here we are. Training camp's about to start. A little bit after that, the Lakers were just coming off their first championship in a while. Um, and Phil Jackson had made the decision to do Tai Chi as part of training camp. And so Phil had brought in a Tai Chi master and, and he set up mirrors on the court. So we all were facing the Tai Chi master while seeing ourselves in the mirror and we're holding Tai Chi poses, the Phoenix position, um, the wildcat position, leopard, this and that, and, and at one point, our instructor got us into a, a tai, chi, tai Chi position, and he said, this is the Phoenix, and, and Ron Harper behind me, he had won many championships with the Bulls, he said, so the leader said, this is the Phoenix, and Ron Harper said, this is the torn hamstring, <laughs> 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 and so we, uh, you know, it, it, was, it, was a, it was a magical year, it was a year I'll never forget. And it's a year that, that I think about, I've thought about off and on um, this last year because of Kobe's passing. And so it's, uh, it, it was a great moment. Th those were great times. And, uh, you know, obviously excited for the Lakers, what they did this year and what they're going to do in the future. Now, Coach, the biggest question I think I have to ask you now is, can we, if we got you a mirror, could you still do those Tai Chi poses right now? <laughs> There's there's one part of the Tai Chi that I still do sometimes, and it's it's basically rocking back and forth from left to right while swinging your arms, uh, you know, in, in a loose and a limp fashion. I, I still remember that to this day. And sometimes when I'm feeling stressed or when I'm trying to wake myself up in the morning, I'll start doing the Tai Chi. 
just like Phil Jackson and the, and the instructor taught us way back when, many years ago. Well, uh, some I, I served an LDS mission in Korea, and I had some some uh, Koreans teach me some meditation things, and so I would love to, in the off season, sometime maybe after we go hiking in some Crocs or something, have you teach me some Tai Chi. Brandon, you got a deal. We just got to make sure we actually get to hiking in Crocs, like you said. It can't just be something we talk about, something we say we're going to do. It needs to happen. It needs to happen. No, for, for you, Coach, I will I will buy my first official pair of Crocs. <laughs> there we go. There we go. <laughs> Coach, what's what's it been like for you and your squad so far? You've had three games underneath your belt. Uh, you're 2-1 and one heading into this, this week with Southern Utah and Wyoming. What's it been like trying to balance the whole COVID situation with back to school and, and basketball? It's been a challenge. I, I think if you asked any D1 coach, shoot, any coach in America at any level, what it's like to coach a team during the pandemic it's a challenge just in in the last three days we've had three players no as as a matter of fact we've had four players return from quarantine two had covid two had been had a high level high probability exposure to covid they ended up not getting it but nevertheless everybody served a a 14-day quarantine um and and so bringing players back after they've been out of rhythm or after they've been severely sick in one case it's a challenge It's a challenge, and you have to be careful. These are young men. I have two sons now, and so I do try to treat our players as I would treat my own sons. Um, And that that at at times it means um, exercising discipline and exercising order. At other times it means putting my arm around a player. And sometimes it means saving our players from themselves. Um, You know, the, the player I have in mind, he wanted to be out there playing a lot, but we have to be cautious and careful as we bring him back from from his COVID symptoms and, and from the COVID sickness. Um, life is bigger than basketball. Health health is bigger than shooting a ball. And so we're, we're being careful and cautious um, while at the same time doing everything we can to, to prepare for every game. Now, Coach, uh, I, I know you like to take things one game at a time. This week you have two games. We'll start with Southern Utah first. Uh, last year, Southern Utah, I know I've heard you say this to me and, and to other people, was one of the most nervous times that you felt as a coach. You're one foul away from playing with four guys to finish out the game. Uh, what are you expecting in this in this year's matchup? <laughs> yeah, Brandon, I, I will not forget that moment, looking out, on the, out there on the court and thinking to myself, I can't suit up Todd Phillips. I can't suit up Todd Okerson. I can't suit up Jared Jackson. And, and sure as heck, I'm not going in there. <laughs> um, but I give a lot of credit to our players last year. Um, we, we did not have a full roster for that game. We, we had a, a number of situations, some injuries that had depleted our roster. We were down to seven or eight bodies. Um, and still in all, on the road, we almost pulled out that win. It, it, it took a last-second shot. And, and give Southern Utah credit. Give Southern Utah credit. Um, um, Knight threw in a last-second shot and, and, and put them put them ahead. We, we weren't able to to surpass it in the, in the in the final seconds of the game. But Southern Utah has a great program. They have a program with tradition. Um, it'll be a tremendous game. We, we've been studying tape on them. They've been watching tape on us, I'm sure. And I like the additions that they they made to their team this year. With that being said, we made additions too. And so it'll be a great game. I think it'll be a well-fought game. What can uh, Wolverine fans expect on on Wednesday night's matchup and, and Saturday's matchup that we haven't seen so far this season? I'm hoping, Brandon, that you guys are going to be able to see a full roster. Uh, we have not seen that this year. We have not been close to that this year for various reasons. And so I'm hoping that all the UV alum- UVU alumni out there, all those basketball fans and supporters of UVU, I, I'm very hopeful that they're going to see a full roster either Wednesday or Saturday. Hopefully both. I don't know if both will happen, but but that is um, what I'm shooting for, and that's what our medical and training staff is shooting for because when we're at full strength and when we're in rhythm, uh, we're going to be a really good team this year. We're going to knock some people off that will surprise some people. Um, but again, it's not going to be a flash in the pan immediate thing because in the same way that other schools have dealt with injury and, and COVID situations, we're kind of hitting that wave right now. Um, and so 
again, I'm, I'm hopeful that we can put a complete team on the floor, and I think that'll be exciting for the fans. I know it'll be, it's exciting for us. All right, Coach, we know you're very busy, but we again, we thank you for taking the time to be with us, and uh, good luck in the prep for the next couple of days. We'll see you Wednesday. Sounds good, Brandon. And I'll shoot you that link, Crocs.com, man, so you can, you know, so we can get that taken care of and get on that hike. Absolutely. Hit, send it my way. <laughs> Sounds good, man. Thank you. Talk to you later. All righty. That was Coach Mark Madsen with the UV men's basketball team. We'll be right back with more on the UV Coaches Show right after this. Right next to UVU, Wolverine Crossing is the premier award-winning student property in Orem. With renovations of nearly $5 million, Wolverine Crossing has the look and feel of luxury living, including contemporary upgrades and top-tier amenities. Wolverine Crossing supports a strong academic environment, whether you're on campus or remote, and the resident assistant program is nationally recognized, so safety and support is the top priority. Please now get half off your November rent. Wolverine Crossing, this is home. Some people see just another local Utah sports app. Oh, wait, what? A local Utah sports app? Introducing the new KSL Sports app, powered by kslsports.com. Utah's only all-in local sports app, connecting you with all the action you love. The latest news, insider analysis, podcasts from the pros, and so much more. Free. Available right now, anywhere you are. Download the free KSL Sports app today from your favorite app store. All right, now we are pleased to be joined here on the Utah Valley men's basketball radio uh, show by Southern Utah University head coach and pride of Fowler, Michigan, Coach Todd Simon. Coach, how are you doing today? Oh, I'm doing great. Uh, thanks, thanks for having me. So, Coach, uh, we'll get to, to basketball, especially your fantastic win uh, over Montana last night, 64-63. to First time since 1999 you guys have beaten Montana at home. We'll dive into that just real quick. Since we are in uh, football season, growing up in, in Michigan, who did you root for? You know, I was a Michigan uh, Michigan football fan growing up. I, you know, I, I just, for whatever reason, everybody kind of picks a side, and, uh, but uh, yeah, I was diehard Michigan football, and and, and you know following the, the Fab Five. But uh, you know on the basketball side, kind of once Coach Izzo was a you know a Michigan guy, and he kind of started following Michigan State basketball once once he kind of got in there. We got to root for one of our own, but uh, but definitely in the football side of things it was all Michigan football. Have you uh, have you ever met Coach Izzo before? Yeah, yeah, he's been great to us, and uh, you know, back when uh, I was coaching at the high school level, we sent him a couple players, and and uh, yeah, he's he's been good to us. Gave us a game a couple years ago, so uh, yeah, yeah, he's 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 been a good guy and, and a good uh, you know example to kind of follow and enjoy watching a lot of his practices kind of coming up. Now, would you say that he's one of the coaches that, as you try to? continue to to mold into your craft is he somebody that you definitely look up to and and aspire to be somewhat like yeah you know, he, you know he's he his style uh you know you come from that area just the hard-nosed uh toughness uh over everything type of mentality um you know just following that i mean think that that exemplifies that mid-michigan area that that uh being from there and and so just kind of coming up that kind of formulating your your basketball philosophy i think watching those practices at a at, you know at a, at a college age high school age and peeking in there every once in a while and then kind of doing that throughout and following the program i think that 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 is exemplifies a little bit of what we're trying to do here as well now where where did your love of basketball come from you, you know i, I think just being in, in in a family in an area that that values sports, uh, I think growing up just just kind of fall in love with it. I mean, at early age, uh, you know, Magic Johnson being from the area and following that, and, and Detroit Piston bad boy basketball was so good and such a phenomenon uh, growing up that uh, it was a kind of a natural love at first sight type of thing, and 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 I think the sports just kind of been such a big part of my life. But, you know, since since that young age, but I think just that 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 part of where we grew up is it's such a big deal. 
Excellent. Well, now you, you've gone through several different stops, and here you are at Southern Utah. Been there for a couple of years now. Uh, last year, uh, Utah Valley was one foul away from playing against you guys with, with four players, and uh, Coach Madsen, I know, talked to him, said he doesn't ever want to repeat that again. Uh, we'll dive into the matchup here just a little bit, but again, congratulations on that big victory last night against Montana, uh, 64-63. Uh, I know it's been kind of a crazy off season and a crazy year for everybody, but what did last night's victory really mean for you, for you and your program, especially during this year? Yeah, I mean, it was a good tough nose victory. You know, we didn't, we didn't play really great. You know, we didn't make a lot of shots. Um, you know, it was kind of a, um, hard nose, you know, you know, kind of throwback basketball game with two physical teams. And uh, ultimately the game uh, came down to, you know, us taking care of the ball, which we did a great job with and, and offensive rebounds and getting to the foul line. And our guys having the maturity to realize, hey, the shots aren't falling. Let's just stay on attack. And uh, we did that. And, and guys just kind of kept getting paint touches. And, and that was gratifying to be able to win that way. Now hopefully we'll clean up a few things and, and have at it tomorrow. So, uh, again, conference play right now, Utah Valley, and I believe many other conferences are following the same format where it's the two games back-to-back uh, against the same opponent very quickly. How has your team and how have you as a coaching staff been able to try and get your team ready to play during this COVID season? It's It's been a unique experience. The, the, the COVID uh, protocols and, and the conscientiousness that is required in order to navigate this is is such a huge part of what we do. And luckily, we're, we're fortunate. Our guys have have done a great job with it. You know, it requires a lot of sacrifice. These eighteen to twenty two year olds are certainly uh, giving up a lot in order to play these seasons. And and hats off to them for doing so. But uh, but there's no there's no shortage of of strategy that goes into it. And, and constant preaching of, 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 you know, being careful and who you surround yourself with. Um, so it's certainly a challenge, but it, we've been able to navigate it pretty well so far. Again, uh, taking on Montana tomorrow and then looking forward to next week, you guys cruise up I-15 up here to Orem to take on Utah Valley. <clears throat> Excuse me. What are you, what are you expecting from, from the Wolverines? If you have even looked at the tape so far this year? Yeah, you know, you keep an eye on them. We, we, you know, watched a little bit of them, and and uh, you know, he does a great job. He does a great job, and I think they're they've reinvented themselves with some new faces, and I think they're going to be kind of in 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 the mold of what Coach Mads is trying to do, and and they got a great size. You know, I look, I like their talent level, and and so so you're, it's going to be a, a very tough game. It's going to be a very tough competitive game, and. Um, you know, I think we've got to we've got to be ready for some some different lineups, some some different mix and matches early in the year. It's hard to get a feel for who everybody is as we continue to evolve. I've spoken with several different coaches, um, and you know, again with the COVID protocol, they haven't really been able to have the full team. Utah Valley hasn't been able to have their full team. Have you been able to have your full team together so far? We have. We've had. We you know we we're very strategic in how we're doing things. And, uh, you know, how we're, how we're practicing, you know, so a lot of, um, you know, maybe scout team versus first team or, you know, not very much first team versus second team because you don't want the contacts and separating guys on the, you know, when they're out, you know, so it's, it's a unique way of going about it. Um, but we're trying to be very strategic. So that way, if some guys go down, you're practicing in masks, I mean, you have some limitations on, on things that we can do, but we've just tried to really, uh, maximize we can with, with a uh, appropriate level of caution in the meantime. Excellent. We'll let you go with this last question here, coach, uh, for those who may not have been in tune with the program, both at Southern Utah, uh, this week, and then coming into next week, who are some players that people should keep their eyes out for? Yeah, we've got a, we've got a couple senior guards and, and John Knight the third, who's who's been putting up big numbers and and playing really well for us. Dre Marines, um, you know, started for almost four years, uh, playing playing really well for us. Can really shoot it. Uh, Tevian Jones, a transfer from Illinois, 
uh, can really score it. And uh, in the front court, uh, Mason Fawcett and, and Harrison Butler are both juniors that have contributed a lot for, for three years. And uh, Ivan Madun gets, you know, kind of the majority of the five man minutes. He's a fifth year senior, 6'11, out of Croatia, that can really shoot it. Um, gives us kind of a, a shooting guard at the center position, which which is a good advantage for us. So uh, those are kind of the main guys. And we have a number of, of, of new guys that, that are continuing to, to help us. Um, you know, Marquise Moore transfer from Detroit and Nick Fleming, uh, junior college transfer, um, are a couple guys, uh, Damani McIntyre's back, you know, so we have a, we, we, we have a good core group of guys that, that, uh, we feel pretty good about. We feel like we can go pretty deep with this group, with this roster. Well, again, Coach, we know you're busy. Thank you for taking the time to chat with us. Good luck against uh, Montana tomorrow, and we'll see you uh, this next week here in Orm. Thank you so much for having me. All right, that was Southern Utah head coach Todd Simon. We'll be right back with more on the Utah Valley Coach Show after this. At UCCU, we do mortgages fast. Seriously fast. Just use your phone or computer to fill out UCCU's super easy mortgage application. You'll receive an instant pre-approval before you start shopping. Your completed mortgage file will be underwritten by UCCU's very own in-house professionals. Like us. Seriously fast. Buying or refinancing a home has never been this easy. Seriously fast and super easy. It's what I do. It's what I do. It's what we do. I love this view. I love that every time this commercial airs, I get to drink another Mountain Dew. All right, everybody, welcome back to the UVU Coaches Show We're right here on ESPN 960. We're going to wrap up shop here. We're going to take our weekly look at the Western Athletic Conference, recap Utah Valley, and uh, this segment, I guess you could say unofficially sponsored by uh, WackHoopsDigest.com and Kyle McDonald. <laughs> Kyle's always uh, joining us each week to give us the ins and outs of the Western Athletic Conference as well as his insights with Utah Valley. Joining us uh, via digital technology in Las Vegas, Kyle McDonald, how are you, man? I'm good, Brad. A little tired. Played a little bit of golf this afternoon. We tried playing 18 holes, but it got a little dark too quick. And, uh, uh, you know, we just... A little tired. Legs are a little tired, but overall, I'm good. I'm good. I'll tell you whose legs were tired was Utah Valley's defense in the second half on Wednesday against Westminster. I mean, give Westminster credit, uh, but they gave Utah Valley fits, and it was it was a lot closer of a game than a lot of people thought. I, uh, uh, I don't know, what's the word I want to describe for that that game that I watched on Wednesday night? It was sloppy and disappointing um uh, that's a game where you know utah valley they got out to the big lead in the first half the second half they should have extended that lead so that guys like trey ferrer could get more minutes um it, it just i don't know maybe they were just tired because they i mean jj trey woodbury Fardos, they've played a lot of minutes early on in the season so far um, so it, it might have been a combination of tire legs, but still, you got to have that mentality that when I, we get up big at halftime, we have to bury a team, especially a non-Division One team. Um, unfortunately, that didn't happen. I think Mark Madsen said it best in his press, you know, post-game presser. Give credit to Westminster; they kept battling and battling and battling. And the thing is, with a school like that, who's a major underdog, you let them have confidence. I mean. Had they not had the big deficit to overcome at halftime, who knows what could have happened. So, um, you know, credit to Westminster, but, you know, Utah Valley got a win, which is obviously important. It just, you have to have those, that that killer instinct where we're going to bury somebody when we have a big lead instead of let them kind of crawl back and take possessions off. And I think Madsen said as well that there was a ton of miscommunication on defense. Um, so they, they really need to address that, especially with what's coming up this next week. 
Again, we, we have seen what Jamison Overton can do in the, in the first two games of the season, over 20 points. This game, him and Latre Darthur had 16 points combined, and uh, he continues to show that, that he has definitely upped and improved his game since last season. Trey Woodbury, uh, double digits as well, and also dishing out five assists, so he knows that he can, well, we know what he can do, and especially from a lot of different platforms. Is there anybody else that stood out to you uh, from Utah Valley, really the kind of peaked your eyebrows a little bit. Um, I think Blaze Neal gave some really good minutes when he came in. Um, I know that Jordan Brinson struggled a little bit. Jaden McClanahan has his moments, but you know Blaze Neal just kind of showed Mark Madsen that he can run his offense. He executes. He hits shots, um, and he doesn't turn the ball over too much. So Blaze Neal is somebody who's stuck out. I mean, obviously Fardos had another double double, dominating the boards. Um, hopefully. Once they get Evan Cole back and Tim Fuller back, Fardos can get more breathers so he can keep up his energy and keep dominating the paint like he has in the wins that Utah Valley has. Um, and, and going back to what you're saying, Trey Woodbury cannot get in foul trouble. And what, why I say that is you saw how out of rhythm he kind of was, especially in the second half with dealing with foul trouble in the first half. Um, because he's such a playmaker. His basketball IQ is off the charts. He can hit a shot from anywhere. I mean, he's a mismatch problem for a lot of people. Um, if he's When he's in foul trouble, obviously it takes out that rhythm that he's in. Um, so he has to, you know, have that mentality like, I have to stay on the floor. You know, I can play, I can play defense, I can defend, whatever, but I have to stay on the floor. Um, and like you said, JJ has just been, I think I tweet out every time I watch the Utah Valley play, there's some highlight reel dunk that he has. He finishes at the rim. The athleticism, I feel like, has gotten stronger, um, especially when he's going to the rim and attacking. It, it's just been fun to watch so far. And um, Mark Madsen's going to rely heavily on on J.J. Overton and Trey Woodbury, you know, as the season progresses. Utah Valley again victorious last week against Westminster, 79-71, that final score. And they get ready, Kyle, to take on two teams that are very well coached and very well balanced. Uh, good balanced breakfast, I guess you could call them. On Wednesday night, they'll be facing Southern Utah University, and then Saturday facing Mountain West foe Wyoming. And both teams right now are top of their conferences. Uh, Southern Utah just got done beating Montana in back-to-back games over the weekend in thrilling fashion. One-point finishes that came down to the buzzer, both games. And then Wyoming just got done beating Oregon State. And they'll take on uh, Denver on on Wednesday. Uh, What do you think... Utah Valley needs to to do obviously we'll try and see if if we can have an Evan Cole if we can have a Tim Fuller we'll get Jordan Brinson back but what do you think Utah Valley needs or what do you want to see from Utah Valley first off in this game on on Wednesday well you probably already said in this broadcast about the last year when Utah Valley played at Southern Utah where Mark Manson was almost down to four players Um, I think it was was a Brandon Averett that had four fouls and had he fouled out, he would, Mark Madison would have had to play with four players on the court, you know. Um, so this year, Utah Valley is going to have a lot more depth, like we, like you mentioned. Hopefully, Evan Cole and Tim Floor are back by then. I, I believe the two-week quarantine time is up on Wednesday. Um, I don't know if they'll be ready to play on Wednesday against Southern Utah. Hopefully, they are. That gives the Wolverines a little bit more depth. I'm interested to see the battle between Jamison Overton and I believe it's John Knight the third, the point guard from Southern Utah, who's athletic, finishes at the rim, and made some big plays this weekend against Montana in um, those two wins. I- I'm looking forward to that. That'll be a fun game. It's an in-state, you know, battle. And, you know, you've heard the rumors that possibly Southern Utah could be making the jump to the WAC that hasn't been confirmed. You know, it's still speculation, but there's been talk about it. Um but still, to, to have another in-state game, I, the I-15 you know rivalry that separates them, I think it's about three hours from Orem to, to Cedar City. Uh, it's always good. You know, John Wardenberg is an is an associate head coach at Southern Utah. His son Adam Wardenberg was an assistant on the UVU women's basketball team. 
two years ago. So, I mean, it's just, um, it, there's a lot of ties. There's a lot of connections. And even last year, it came down to, you know, the last few seconds of that game before Southern Utah pulled away. And then having Wyoming Mountain West Conference team come into Orem, you don't see that too often outside of, like, maybe Utah State. Um, so it's nice to see Mark Madsen get some home games. I know that uh, they worked that out with the home-and-home home last year uh, when Utah Valley went up and played in the Arena Auditorium in Laramie. I just think the depth will maybe have more of an impact in a positive nature this year for Utah Valley in these two games. And like I said, hopefully the two big guys, Evan Cole and Tim Fuller, are back. That adds some depth, but... Um, perhaps out of the two games, I'm looking forward to seeing Jameson Overton against John Knight III um, when you know Utah Valley hosts Southern Utah. Now switching gears just a little bit, what's going on in the WAC, Kyle? Uh, cancellations. Let's just say that. Cancellate? No, I'm just kidding. Um, I mean, in reality, New Mexico State had a positive COVID test that canceled their two games in California against Santa Clara and Cal Poly. Um, and then California Baptist has two games canceled this next week. So then Saturday night, Grand Canyon was supposed to play Prairie View A&M. That got canceled due to, you know, COVID concerns, you know, on Prairie View A&M's part. Um, you know, it's kind of interesting. I was talking to somebody in the WAC today. Seattle's been away from – the Pacific Northwest for nearly two weeks now. Um, and they haven't had a positive COVID test. They just played Long Beach State on Sunday night, lost. Um, and they played UCLA a couple of days before that. I mean, they played in Las Vegas. They played in Portland. Um, and they haven't had any issues. So it's kind of interesting, you know, New Mexico State was in a bubble, obviously, in Phoenix tested you know prior to the santa clara game it got canceled because there was one positive test within the new mexico state uh, basketball program it, it's kind of crazy how all of that is playing out um you know on the other side of it both utrgv and tarleton state had great showings at texas a&m this past week um Dixie State won its first ever NCAA Division One game against a Division One opponent in North Dakota. Uh, I mean, Frank Stain, the point guard down there for John Judkins, he had a great opening night. Um, and Jared Green, their big man, had another stellar night against St. Catherine in a win on Saturday night. So it's it's a fun league to watch. There's a lot going on. Grand Canyon obviously is undefeated right now. And I think I believe I saw somewhere they're second in the nation in rebounding with you know Ali Lever and Asbjorn Mitgard. There's just a lot of storylines. Um, CBU had a bad loss uh, on Wednesday night against Southeast Louisiana, but two nights later they beat Southeast Louisiana by double by double figures or double digits, excuse me, and showed that that's the, the California Baptist team that we should get accustomed to. Um, so there's a lot of good things going on. It's a fun conference, but, you know, the tough thing is seeing the cancellation, seeing, you know, when guys and players and coaches have worked hard to get to where they're at, to get prepared for games, to get things set up, especially in New Mexico State's case, where they're having to set up games on the fly, really. Um and then to have that one COVID positive derail all of that, it just, it makes for difficult times and unfortunate circumstances. And, um, but you know, basketball still being played and that's the positive note and, you know, we just have to move forward and hope that, you know, everybody stays safe, stays healthy, but also, you know, basketball can be played. I know that there's a lot of people that want to see possibly the season canceled things shut down and, you know, maybe give the players a waiver for next year and so on and so on. Um, I don't necessarily agree that that's the way to go. That's another discussion for another day. Um, but there's been a lot of good basketball this week and, you know, looking forward to more of it as the, in the weeks to come. Well, Kyle, we know you're busy as always. Thanks again for breaking it down with us in the Western Athletic Conference and with Utah Valley. Uh, safe travels and uh, 
win a couple extra bucks for me down there. <laughs> oh, I, we won't go into that discussion tonight, Brandon, but thanks for having me as always. <laughs> All right, that was Kyle McDonald with the WackHoopsDigest.com. And we're going to wrap things up here. This has been the UVU Coaches Show on ESPN 960. Again, thank you to all of our uh, producers in the studio, for everybody at Utah Valley, for Todd Simon and, and Bryson uh, Lester down at Southern Utah for getting that interview. Uh, great show. And uh, we'll be seeing you on Wednesday here on ESPN 960. Tip off for Utah Valley in Southern Utah, 6 o'clock Mountain Standard Time. And the pregame show, 5.30 p.m. Mountain Standard Time as well. Take care, everybody, and we'll talk with you on Wednesday. Wednesday.